Hey, welcome back everyone. You're watching Centerline Designs. If you're new to the channel, my name is Cole. Um, we're in the Centerline Design Shop. In the background, we've got the Snowcat build. If you're not already following that build series, check it out. It's been pretty fun. Going to get back to it pretty soon. Um, I wasn't going to do a video on the assembly of this new Langmuir Crossfire Pro CNC plasma table, um, but I decided that I wanted to show you the interface process of my plasma cutters to the table. The two plasma cutter machines I have are a Hypertherm 30XP, which does not have CNC ports on it, so it is not intended to be used with a table, and the Yes Welder CT2050 that actually does have uh, CNC ports on the back for the pinouts for the trigger control and the arc voltage. Now, Langmuir provides a module that allows you to interface into plasma cutters that were not intended for CNC use. There's only two things that they need to see. They need to see the raw arc voltage and the trigger switch. You need access to those contacts. So Langmuir provides the module that you tie in and it takes that arc voltage and steps it down into a, a divided voltage signal for the electronics they have. And then you tie in a parallel switch to that trigger so that it can automatically start stop the machine. Um, it's not that all that complicated of a process, but I still wanted to show it because I feel that it might make people nervous uh, about doing that aspect of it. It's not that hard. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, and then I'll quickly show you the pinouts that I'll just have to make up a little custom cable to tie this machine to the table. Um, I want the ability to use either or, depending on the processes that I'm using with either machine, so it just allows for some more flexibility. Um, and you know what? It really doesn't take that much time to transfer machines over. So enough talking. Let's go ahead and take a look at this 30XP. Okay, I went ahead. I took the cover off the 30XP. You really just have to take the two screws out of the top, and it all sort of pops apart. I noticed that there was this really nice empty space in the front. So I went ahead, and I drilled it out, and I put in a two-screw connector. Um, that's going to run the cable through for the trigger switch contact, and then uh, some banana jack leads for the raw arc voltage. Okay, now that I have the cables entered through the front faceplate of this 30XP, I'll go ahead and kind of explain what's happening here. So these two leads with the banana jack ends will plug into this voltage dividing module. And what this is doing is looking at the raw arc voltage between your ground clamp and the torch head. There's a B of voltage there. It's looking at that and sending that information to the CNC table. The reason I'm looking at that is because this table has a Z axis or a torch height control. So when you're plasma cutting, you always want to maintain an optimum cut height uh, for the best cut results. So this table is going to be able to monitor that voltage. And as the voltage rises, that means the torch is moving away from the material and it'll move the torch down. And as the voltage lowers, it means the torch is getting too close to the material and it'll lift it up. So when you're dealing with thinner sheet metal or something that has a bit of a wave or a warp in it, um, you can wind up with inconsistent cuts if your torch isn't able to follow the contours of that material. So I paid for that. That was an extra on this. But from what I read, it's, it's a, you know, go for it. If you're going to get the machine, spend that bit of extra money and get it. So these terminals, I believe the red is going to be connecting on to where the ground clamp screw is just on the back side. It's very simple. I'll put a little ring terminal on that, hook it up. And then the black wire here will connect in right under the raw arc voltage terminal that goes to the plasma cutter head. And, uh, and then this other wire here is the, the trigger switch cable. So it will be tying into the orange and the purple wires via some spade connectors and little cable tie-ins that I'm not usually a fan of because they just corrode and make for messy wiring. But I'm using them here because it's really nice and simple and it's going to be contained in a clean box. And then that connects into the plasma table that will allow the start-stop of the plasma cutter itself for when it's moving around. So let's go ahead, get those tied in, and then I'll show you kind of what it all looked like.
falta. Okay, let's put it back together. Now, this isn't really my most favorite type of loom. This is that, you know, cheap automotive split style stuff. But sometimes what's best is what you got. These wires are. I'm just going to put this on here to help uh, any chafing that might happen. So just finish off that crappy room. There. Now we have a Hypertherm 30XP that connect to a CNC port. All right. Well, there we go. We have this machine set up for CNC cutting. That's going to be our raw voltage. That'll go to a module that I'm going to, they actually give you some Velcro. I'm going to Velcro it on the outside here and then that'll plug in on that. This module then plugs into the THC plug right here for torch height control. And then finally, the last plug-in is the torch remote on off switch. And that'll plug in to there. And then the only thing left to do, other than put that connector back on, is to take the ground clamp and put it on the workpiece when we get one in there, and then take the torch and we'll get it clamped in on the Z axis control there. Other than that, we're pretty much ready to go. I don't have any water in the table yet. 
Uh, I'm not probably going to do any cutting in this video. That will probably be a separate video coming up shortly. I have some things I have to get done. But let's go quickly look at this CT2050 and I'm going to show you how much easier that is going to be able to interface with this. Uh, both of them will be interchangeable, unplug and plug in now, but uh, setup on that's going to be a little faster. Okay, here is the Yes Welder first CT2050 I was talking about. Yes Welder sent me this machine to test out, demo, see what I thought of it, produce some content. So this machine is really nice because it actually has CNC port right on the back of it. So the only thing I need to do is make up a little bit of a custom cable. Uh, one cable will be for the uh, start-stop control, the on-off. Uh, this port has port pins 1 and 2 as the control switch, so I make up a cable for that. And then the top two is arc voltage, positive and negative. The only thing I need to look into is the voltage division on that and make sure the scaling is correct. Uh, or if I don't if I'm not confident in that, or if that is just raw arc voltage itself, then I will create another set of those two banana leads that will plug into the voltage module that Langmuir sends for non-CNC machines. So either way, it's going to be fairly quick, simple, plug and play. Um, this machine does have technically a higher cut capacity. I haven't tested it yet. It says it can cut up to one inch, which I highly doubt. Most 45 amp machines are only rated to about half inch, maybe five eighths. So I think one inch is a stretch, but when are you really working with one inch material anyways, right? All right, well, I'm going to leave that video there. Uh, plasma cutting is going to happen in the next one. The table is not quite set up yet. I need to get water in that water table, fire everything up, run the machine through a test demo program they suggest. So I'm going to go, go ahead and get that stuff done. And then uh, if you want to see some of the content that this table is going to be producing, hit that subscribe to my site. We got lots of snowcat related stuff and uh, some cool artsy fartsy things that I want to get done for Christmas time. So check it out. Hit that subscribe. Don't forget to smash the like. We'll see you in the next one.